Do you want to answer this? Can we take some questions? Yeah. yeah. Sure. All right. So um, first question that came in uh, in advance from somebody in the press was, do I need a special T-Mobile plan? And you know, as I said in my remarks, my, uh, we're not here to announce the product yet, but my vision for this is that on our most popular plans, we're just going to go ahead and include this. And you know, we feel like that's what the uncarrier does. That's important. Now, there, there, there may be low-cost plans that don't include it. And there, our aspiration is to charge a monthly service fee that will be far less than the monthly service fees charged by today's sat satellite connectivity services. And, but for the most popular plans at T-Mobile, our vision is to just go ahead and include it for free, just like we did with the global connectivity for our cellular roaming partners all around the world. So uh, do Starlink satellites have to be reprogrammed to com communicate using T-Mobile's radio band? Uh, actually, we, we need to do more than simply reprogram the satellites. Uh, we are constructing um, special antenna. Uh, like I said, they're, they're actually very big antenna uh, that uh, are ex also extremely advanced. They're uh, the most advanced uh, phased array antennas in the world, we think. Um, and it has to be, the, uh, the, the, the antennas have to be extremely advanced because they've got to pick up a very quiet signal from your cell phone. And you can imagine if that's like cell phone, that, that, that signal's got to travel 500 miles and then be caught by a satellite that's traveling 17,000 miles an hour. Um, and the satellite's got to compensate for the Doppler effect of, of moving so fast. So it's, it's, this is really quite a difficult technical challenge. Um, but we have it working in the lab, and, and we're, we're confident this will uh, work in the field. So it's, it's actually quite a lot of extra hardware on the satellites. And uh, it's also a, a lot of software, yes. <laughs> it's a hard problem. That's why it's not been solved before. So the question is, is the invitation for all carriers across the world or just the US to start? Um, you know, one of the beautiful things about satellites is that they orbit the Earth. And so you know, our mutual view was the more companies around the world we can get signed up for this the way T-Mobile is signing up for it tonight, um, the better. Because, and, and what we're offering is reciprocal roaming so that our spectrum, which will be transmitted uh, by the satellites all around the United States, including territorial waters, vast portions of Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, big swaths of the ocean potentially, um, will be available to visitors in the United States from, that have carriers all over the world. And our view is that the best way to do this would be to ask them to also participate, find a piece of mid-band spectrum in their country from their carrier that they can dedicate to this in partnership with SpaceX, uh, and then our customers would benefit from the same thing when our customers visit their country. And that's, that's one way this could roll out. And so tonight's message is a call to those carriers to get involved and join the party. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're, we're uh, yeah, so this, this is an open invitation to uh, um, carriers around the world. Uh, you know, please get in touch with us and um, we'd love to partner with you and enable this uh, uh, globally, so yeah. Next question right in front of us, will Starlink handle any of T-Mobile's backhaul transport? Well, we're open to that, and we're partners now. So, you know, um, yeah. And, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, and, <laughs> you, you know, it's, um, I, I, I'm a Starlink customer, so I use the Starlink service right now. And it's, it has blown my mind. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing service with massive capacity and speed and, and, and fan, for my, in my experience, fantastic reliability. And so, you know, I do think there's an opportunity as we reach further and further into certain rural areas uh, to make that the way we reach people with full voice data um, and messaging services. And so, you know, certainly we're open to that. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you want to do, uh, oh, there yeah, okay. okay. Does participating messaging apps mean iPhone users on this Starlink connection will be on iMessage as usual and Android users will be on RCS? Um, you know, we haven't actually began, we just announced this moments ago, we haven't actually begun working with other companies as to how they will integrate with us. But the reason we said select messaging apps is because it's a bit of a technical problem um, that we need help from the partner with in order to separate messaging traffic from all other data traffic. We've done this before with prior initiatives at T-Mobile. We know how to do it, but sometimes we need a little bit of involvement from partners. We also need to make sure that they're 
uh, working with us in a payload aware way. And so our, our, our opportunity over this next few months is to open up a program and invite messaging apps to participate such that they, they are reaching our network in a way that our network can see and separate the messaging traffic and make it available to participate in this service right out of the gate. So that's the vision. And our, and our partners uh, in the internet have worked with us before. Years ago, we did Music Freedom, and we, uh, we were the first company to allow you to stream all your music free at T-Mobile back when, back when you sold data by the data bucket. And we, you know, so we've been through this journey before, and that's, that's basically how it'll work. Yeah, I think an important thing, though, is that you will not uh, need to get a new phone. The phone you currently have will work. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so some audience questions? Yeah, hey, hey guys. Uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, question for Elon. Uh, Eric Berger from Ars Technica. Um, you said the Gen 2 antennas are very big. Um, can you talk about how big those are, sort of? So big. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, you know, NASA has had some issues with another company's antennas because they were really big. So I'm just trying to get a sense of like how big they are. And then like how many of these can actually fit in the Falcon 9 payload fairing because you've been talking about launching that in addition to Starship. So thanks. Um, yeah, so. We, we think that, like the, the, the service will be primarily a Starlink uh, V2 uh, satellite. The Starlink V2 is, uh, the, the main body of the satellite is uh, about seven meters long. Uh, so call it maybe 40% uh, longer than an SUV. Um, uh, um, and then the, uh, the antennas that we're talking about here would be supplemental to the KU uh, and KA antennas that we're uh, currently using on Starlink 1 and uh, to the, the, the laser links. So the Starlink 2 will satellites, uh, we, we tend to have uh, KA, KU, improved KA, KU, um, and um, obviously the laser links. And then in addition, we, we would uh, fold out the, um, the, uh, the sort of cell spectrum antenna that would be also quite large, so on the order of uh, five or six meters uh, on, a, on, on a side. So roughly 25 square meters. And then can you get those in the Falcon 9 payload fairing? Uh, the Starlink V2 is uh, meant for Starship. Um, th 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 we, we, we might, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's meant for Starship, like th those things. Uh, um, so the, the, the Starlink uh, V2 satellites are, are very large and, uh, and too big to fit in a Falcon 9, uh, but the, uh, we are, we are actually looking at, at an interim uh, solution, which is like a, a sort of Starlink V2 Mini that would um, maybe launch, uh, if, if, a Starlink, if, if the Starship is program uh, is delayed uh, longer than expected, we'd launch a sort of a, small, a smaller uh, Starlink V2 kind of Mini that would fit on a Falcon 9. Thank you. Um, Andrew Clifford. Uh, uh, it's nice to be here. Thanks for putting this on. I'm with TLPN Network and the Launchpad official. Um, so I guess the first question, well, I just have like a, a question about the technical difficulties that you ran into uh, getting up to this point and actually being able to decide that this was worth pursuing. Like what was the hardest technical hurdle to get past? Uh, and it, before beta, is there going to be an opportunity for like emergency services or anybody to kind of get their hands in on this to see how well it works? So yeah, um, uh, as soon as we have the satellites uh, in, in orbit, we will um, try to enable them to connect to cell phones for emergency services. So um, you actually don't need, uh, unlike a, a, re a real-time connection, you don't need to have the full constellation of satellites active in order to transmit text messages, or email for that matter. So uh, any, any kind of asynchronous communication uh, will, will work even, with, even if there's only one satellite. Um, so, um, now of course we, we are constrained by regulatory approval. Um, so the, but from a technical standpoint, uh, it's, it should work even when there's only a handful of satellites uh, in orbit, uh, b because of the asynchronous nature of the of text messaging and email. Uh, you might just have to wait, uh, you know, I don't know, a half an hour maybe, worst for for the, the thing to go through, but. Uh, 
it should still work fr from the early on. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Elon. Luis Balderas with Lab Padre Media. Good to see you again. Hey, nice to see you. Uh, had a couple of off-topic questions, but I'm going to skip those. <laughs> yeah, we're going to stay on topic, otherwise. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, so, <laughs> with this new technology, um, will it will this eliminate uh, international plans? And you talked about download speeds. What about upload speeds? Yeah, this will not. Uh, <laughs> um, I do want to. Uh, like this, this is an amazing thing that we're unveiling, but I do want to make sure that it's uh, understood in the right context. Um, so, the uh, the size of the cell that that um, will be quite large uh, compared to the, the space-based cell system. The area of the cell will be large compared to a terrestrial system. So, this is really meant for uh, places that don't have uh, cell tower connectivity, um, because um, although it's like maybe two to four megabits. Um, a capability is that that's what the capability is for the entire cell so if you've got um, you know uh, so, so that, that, we're, that we're, we're talking about like one to two thousand voice calls uh, per cell but that cell is, is going to be quite large um, and so you it, it really is it's not a substitute for ground cell stations because ground, ground cell stations especially in uh, urban and, and suburban areas uh, will definitely be superior to what we're talking about here. This is really meant to provide uh, basic coverage to areas that are currently completely dead. Thank you. Good evening, Christian von Pricing with KRGV here in West Loco, a local affiliate. I wanted to ask about situations that we have here in the Rio Grande Valley and in South Texas. The winter freeze, hurricane, big floods, situations where we kind of run out of bandwidth. We start losing cellular connectivity. It affects everyday people. It affects the first responders. So with what you were talking about earlier, is it going to help assist with that situation? Yeah, I mean, I can jump in. It's one of the big um, benefits of this is redundancy. And one of the big priorities of our industry, and I know of the FCC who regulates us, is redundancy. And one of the things about starting next year with messaging, as opposed to trying to plunge right into voice and data right away, is that with messaging, we should be able to handle a lot of messages, uh, many, many thousands of messages that can be sent. And so when you do have outages that happen through natural disasters or otherwise, there's an opportunity for people at scale to be connected in real time. And Elon was saying there could be a, uh, a lag at first, but he's talking about before we reach commercial service, right? So eventually, as we hit commercial service and even beta, this is, this is real time messaging where you send a message, you get an answer, you know, you're connected. And by limiting it to messaging in the early going, it allows us to address use cases like that complete redundancy to cellular networks, which are subject to the weather because they're here on planet Earth. Yeah, but I, this, this really is a, a big deal. It's a great, great question to ask because, yeah, even if an entire region or country was, was uh, lost connectivity because of a severe, you know, uh, hurricane or floods or fires or, you know, tornadoes, uh, earthquakes, and there's so many natural disasters, obviously, um, you would actually still have, even if all the cell towers were taken out, your phone would still work. Thank you. Hi, it's Evelyn Arevalo for Tasmanian.com. Um, how many Starlink users can a single Starlink satellite support? So in this, in this context of, of uh, uh, for, for this application, we're talking about roughly two to four megabits uh, per cell zone. Um, so it depends on how many people are in that cell zone. Um, you divide that bandwidth by the number of people in the cell zone and how, um, and who are using it simultaneously. So uh, what that, since uh, a voice call is about uh, two kilobits, uh, that's you know, one to 2,000 simultaneous voice calls, um, or uh, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of text messages that, that could be sent depending on the length of the text message. Thank you. Uh, we have some coming in while you're coming to the stage. We have some coming in from online. Uh, at Isaac Swede. 
How will the phones connect to Starlink? Any special hardware required? I think Elon got at this a little bit. One of the beauties of this approach is that we are using existing T-Mobile mid-band PCS spectrum, some of the most tried and true spectrum there is, and we own it nationwide. It's one of the pieces that we own contiguous on every single corner of the country. So that allows us to then uh, dedicate that working together to the constellation uh, that Starlink operates so that we are seeing those satellites from every corner of the country. You know, as we said in the remarks, if you have a clear view of the sky, our vision is you're connected. And, it's, and, and so your phone doesn't really know. You know, your phone doesn't know it's connecting to space. It's, it will scan for its home network. It'll scan for terrestrial roaming partners as well. And if it fails to see those things, it will scan again, and it will connect to the authorized connection from the satellite. And it'll think it's, it's connected to a cell tower, because that phone is using industry standard technology communication protocols, and it has the spectrum already built in, at least the vast majority of phones in circulation today do. Yeah, it, it, the, it's designed to just fully emulate a, uh, a, a cell tower. Um, and, and, and it, has, it has to do, there's quite a bit of complex hardware and software in that because it is moving so fast. It's, they're traveling overhead at 17,000 miles an hour. Normally a cell phone tower does not travel at 17,000 miles an hour. So the phone's like, so, so we actually have to adjust the signal uh, to account for, for something called the Doppler effect, which is uh, sort of a, uh, you know, a, 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 a increase in, in frequency as you, as you comes towards you and a decrease as it goes away. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, it's a, uh, but anyway, it works. <laughs> it's complicated, but it, it works, and no extra hardware is needed. Yeah, hey, uh, Paul Momakos with Ocean Camera Space Corp. Um, so uh, you're, both companies are going to work together, kind of contribute to uh, different infrastructure together to, to build a bigger network and stuff. Um, how do you see this maybe going further into the solar system, maybe future partnership there? Uh, well, we'd love to have T-Mobile on Mars. There you go. <laughs> uh, that might be the last question, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, well, uh, I guess uh, th thanks, everyone, um, and. Uh, we look forward to providing you with uh, this, this great service and, and working together uh, with T-Mobile to, to bring it to you. So, yeah.